first thing is that assignment failure rates in India and China are twice that of other locations due to the cultural differences, language barriers and differences in living conditions. So assignees and their families may find it really difficult to adapt to the weather, the food, the crowded cities, possible pollution and also the unfamiliar cultural expectations that impact both their professional and personal lives. Second thing is, India is an enormous country with a huge diversity of language, religion, food and cultural norms. It is not viable to assume that an assignee will be able to easily adapt just because they've travelled there for business a few times and I've seen many companies assume that. Thirdly, as the results of Cartis's biggest challenges survey reinforce, expat infrastructure, so housing, hospitals, schools, may be of a very different standard to that found in other locations. The quality of housing, for example, may be low, while the cost is comparatively high. Organisations are really advised to invest in the use of a comprehensive candidate assessment programme before sending assignees to India. Cartis's programme provides valuable insights to both the company and the assignee on the likelihood of assignment success. From a corporate perspective, it provides a risk assessment for sending a particular assignee and their family to India. It also highlights specific developmental and support needs that are likely to increase the assignment success potential. From the assignee and family perspective, it enables them to explore their expectations for the assignment and whether these are actually realistic or not. It also assesses their motivations for accepting the assignment in the first place and provides them with critical tools for ensuring that they face the assignment with the right knowledge and also the right attitude, which is really important. Assignees would highly benefit from a customised cross-cultural training programme for them and their families. This programme would ensure that the whole family is prepared for the India experience. The actual nature and extent of the impact of the cultural differences may well depend on the home location of the assignee. Generally speaking, however, assignees from developed Western countries may find the following cultural norms a challenge to adjust to. The first one is hierarchy. Organisation structures, for example, in India are often much more hierarchical than they are in Western countries. Employees will often look to their seniors to advise them on what needs to be done and how to do it. Western managers are often just not used to having to micromanage staff and may get really frustrated with that. The second thing is the relationship orientation. Business success in India is dependent upon the parties establishing a really strong relationship. This just can't be hurried. A heavy investment in relationship building, including extensive social discussions and eating out together, is key in driving business success. The third thing is harmony. Indians do not react well to a direct, aggressive, process-focused business style. A gentle approach is important in order to maintain harmonious relationship. There are a number of attributes that companies should be looking for uh, when looking for candidates for India. The first one is assignees and their families should have demonstrated an ability to thrive in an environment of absolute ambiguity. Those who are highly structured or very process orientated find India's appearance of chaos totally frustrating. I say apparent because India has a beat of its own. Things work well, but in a way and in their own time. A successful assignee is the one who is actually willing to spend time developing relationship, has great communication skills, and who's able to work with IST, which is India's stretchable time. Families who are likely to be successful are often motivated by the fact that they want a totally different experience to that that they've had in their home location. They're likely to be curious and like to try new food and travel, and are inquisitive of new places rather than just being judgmental. I think the sort of things that our clients need to look out for is frustration. Frustration is the first thing that, that you, you tend to be faced with as an assignee moving to India. Also, look to the way and style that the assignee actually operated at in home location. Those who operate in a very structured fashion where there was very little ambiguity tend to really struggle in India. Within India, most Indian managers, the Indian style is very paternalistic. This means that senior leadership tend to know everything about their staff, so both personal and professional, and will try and help them through any personal difficulties. So relationships are very important. 
The ability to work with ambiguity is one thing that I think really discerns whether somebody's going to be successful or not successful in India. So I think you really have to be able to roll with the punches and understand that there are many solutions, not just one solution in India. It does work, but in a very different style and way than you might have been prepared for previously. My final words of advice would be, India does offer a tremendous opportunity for growth to the discerning corporate and the assignee alike. It has an incredible energy, it's mixed with top talent and a high level of entrepreneurship. But companies do need to ensure that they're sending the right candidates, that they set realistic expectations, they focus equally on the family, and that they provide stellar support to the whole family unit. Cross-cultural training, language training, tenancy support, these are very important. Those who are successful often love India and never ever want to leave.